So welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Seth. Uh, I'm really excited because I'm back home for this show, this edition um, in Buffalo. I have this like really rad uh, nature backdrop that courtesy of my dad. He's got a cool little studio uh, in the basement now. So uh, and some sick drums. So we're going to jam later. Um, how are you guys doing? How's everybody holding up? You guys out there? Feel free to talk. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's kind of crazy because I'm like on, um, I'm on, the, I'm on the speakers, man. It's I feel like I'm performing for to my TV over here. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, cool. Let's see. So, uh, what what has happened this year? Let's recap. Uh, you know, crazy presidency stuff. Uh, crazy quarantine stuff. Um, it's been kind of hard for everybody, but especially hard for myself. Uh, because my kink is actually masks. So it's been. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kinks. Uh, I took a test online uh, to see what my kinks were. Has anyone else done this before? Uh, and I was just like, let's see how crazy of a person I am in the sack, right? And uh, it came back uh, 95% vanilla. So that's pretty cool. And actually, I, like normally it suggests like, if you're into this kink, this is what you should watch online in terms of. <laughs> erotic fiction or porn and uh and for me it just it just took me to the crocs.com uh, <laughs> um hey so crocs uh, uh i had a scare back in march uh i thought maybe i uh i, I might have had covid actually uh mostly because when i went out to buy some spring clothes i was eyeing up a fresh pair of crocs and that's when i realized i completely lost my sense of taste. Okay. These are um, uh, so political year. Um, this next joke, uh, I'm not a politics guy or like a politics joke. I mean, it's hard not to be nowadays. But um, I'm actually required uh, by the state of uh, Illinois to give at least one political joke. I, I don't want to, but I have to. Uh, so this is the one political joke. Just do it now. We'll get it out of the way. And uh, it's probably not good. But uh, We'll do it. I meet the requirements. I can keep doing the show. Um, so here we go. So uh, Joe Biden won. Kind of. Maybe. I think. People are saying no. Um, I can hear you guys cheering from home. And, uh, and it was crazy. People were going nuts. Like, people were going crazy in the streets. They were dancing, honking horns, popping champagne bottles. I mean, I saw a Democrat listening to country music. I was like, what? And then... Uh, and then uh, I saw a, a Republican wearing a mask. I was like, what? This is a topsy-turvy world. I saw an independent, not, not just, just hanging out. I didn't know they existed. It was just, it was amazing to see. I was like, you're a real person. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so that was the political joke. We got it out of the way. And we can move on with the show. Thank you guys. You guys are being so patient and awesome with me. Um, let's see. So uh, I do have, I, do, I think I figured out a way for us to, uh, to cut the curve in Chicago, okay, and maybe across the world, because I think these types of places exist in every city, but there's a place in Chicago called Wrigleyville, okay, and I think that, this, this is my idea, we open up Wrigleyville, I know it's crazy, but why are we opening up anything right now, stay with, me. we open up Wrigleyville, completely open, we say come in, free drinks, like we're playing Flip Kong, we're playing, uh, you know, ear pong, we're doing body shots, we're doing it all, Masks are actually, they're banned. You can't wear a mask there. You just come in, you go buck wild, right? Everybody comes in, it gets nuts, right? We burn it to the ground. Okay, <laughs> just get rid of those people. Because, I mean, if, you, if your parents named you Chad or Stephanie, like, do they, do they really love you? you know, we can kind of <laughs> cut the slack, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, let, let, the, uh, let uh, Aunt Lori know about that plan. I think it's a good plan. Um, Hamilton came out this year. Uh, sweet. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I was excited to see Hamilton uh, and not pay like three hundred dollars a seat, you know. Um, but I, I mean, I liked it. But I gotta tell you guys, SpongeBob the Musical. It's better. It's just better. Yeah, there's more bubbles. For... <laughs> and uh, I actually, I did, I did pay money and see SpongeBob the Musical in New York City before all this went down. Highly suggest it. I, usually, when I do that. I've done like three live shows this year. When I do it live, there's like one person who's seen it and they're like, we're SpongeBob brothers. 
Um, speaking of SpongeBob, uh, SpongeBob came out of the closet this year. He's officially gay. Yay! Woo! Woo! Um, which I mean, it, it does. I think it's awesome, but it does raise the question: Is he a bikini top or a bikini bob? You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> all right. Uh, and uh, what hole does he use when he's having? <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I consider myself a uh, bisexual, um, which thank you for being so brave. Uh, I'm, I'm saying thank you to myself, uh, but uh, it's not what you think. It's more so I consider myself a bisexual because I ask for sex and people say bye. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That, that's a good bye before I drove out here I drove out here by myself trying to be a safe container on my family but you know how it is you got to prepare yourself around the holidays um, you're going to get especially now my siblings are older so I'm going to have at least one of my siblings say yeah we're trying to have a child, um, which I, I think is, is gross. That's a gross thing to say, people. I don't know why people, people are saying it during dinner. That's, you know, I, you can say that and talk about your, your trying to have a child cycle while we're having turkey, but, I, but when I talk about how I want to come on someone's feet, I'm the bad guy. I get kicked out of the table. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> come on someone's feet. In my phone. You uh, gotta pause. So what's that about? Thank you. Uh, uh, my siblings, my siblings, all my siblings are younger. I've got eight younger siblings, big family, and like half of them own houses and are married and have dogs and are just like living the dream. Uh, but I can always outshine them because I told them, "Hey man, I'm in Chicago for comedy, and I got this kick-ass Zoom show." So. <laughs> uh, thanks, Junior. Okay. Let's see what else is up. Um, those are my jokes. That's my set. Did you guys like it? Was it fun? <laughs> okay, we've got a crazy lineup tonight. I'm so excited. Uh, we've got some repeat customers, some people doing it for the first time, uh, either on here or ever. I don't even know. You'll, you'll find out. But I'll tell you this everybody is going to do amazing tonight. It's going to be so much fun. So, let's, that being said, uh, let's go, uh, Buck. Turkey Wild for our first performer. You can give me some shouts on playing music. Jennifer Turner. Yay! Yay! Oh, that's nice. Hello. I am Jennifer Turner, and I am what you would call a sauce girl. I love my sauces. I like bold flavors. I get really bored with bland food. I need mayo. I need ketchup. I need mustard. All of them on my burger at the same time. I want spicy and sweet barbecue sauce. I want garlic and pesto aioli. Don't make me choose. I want to dip my chicken nuggets in honey mustard and also maybe later some creamy sriracha. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that if I don't have my condiments, I don't even want it. You have fish and chips and no malt vinegar, just oh, take it away. You have mozzarella sticks and no marinara, one star on Yelp. <laughs> you have french fries and you're out of ketchup. Well, I might as well go home because I am a sauce girl. And I want more than one packet of ketchup. I want a handful of ketchup packets. If I go through the drive-thru and you give me one packet of ketchup, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just stare at you into your soul until you give me what I want. And what I want is more ketchup packets, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize I may have a problem and I'm okay with it. So just bring me the ketchup and leave the bottle. Because I'm a sauce girl. I want my hot wings drenched. And those of you who order your hot wings naked with sauce on the side, I'm not saying that I'm judging you, except for the fact that I am. 
But you're gonna order hot wings for the table with no hot on them, with the hot in a little tiny container that we all have to share. What is this, Soviet Russia? Oh no, are we at war? Must we ration our barbecue and buffalo sauce to send to the brave men at the front? I say no, sir. Just order your hot wings the way God intended, slathered in mango habanero. <laughs> because I also like my food spicy, actually spicy. I want to have a new ulcer when I'm finished spicy. I actually travel with an emergency <laughs> bottle of hot sauce. This is true. Uh, sometimes it's Tabasco, sometimes it's Frank's, sometimes it's both, and they just hold each other's spicy little hands in the bottom of my purse. Why <coughs> do I do this, you ask? Because we have trust issues. Because restaurants everywhere are making mild versions of what is supposed to be spicy because some of you can't handle it. Each time you order volcanic nachos and send it back because it's burning my lips. First of all, that's how you know it's working. <laughs> and you're sending a message that the rest of us can't handle the heat. And I can handle the heat. <laughs> Spicy versions of everything are going away because they are afraid that you're going to complain. So now when I go into my local Mexican restaurant because of the latest recommendation, they point at the menu and say, try this, it's not too spicy. And that's not what I asked. And you're ruining my food. Some places only carry mild salsa now. What is the point of mild salsa? It's just tomatoes and vinegar at that point. And if you prefer mild salsa, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. And you need to go sit in the corner and think about what you've done because you're ruining it. Right. Join me. Just join me in my quest for sweet, sweet heat. Let's graze a bit of those mix and fiery Cheetos. Take my hand. But uh, don't touch your eyes afterward because I, I just cut up a jalapeno. But Let's order extra hot peppers on our subs and lose the feeling in our tongues. Let's cry in public and make people think we had a little spat, but actually we just ordered a bunch of habanero wings with extra ranch because I'm a sauce girl. And that's my time. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Turner. Keep it going for Jen, everybody. I don't know if you can or not. Stand by. Okay. Oh, man. What a great set from Jen. She's a spice girl. Hey, uh, <laughs> muffle, muffle, nice boy. Uh, we like the wings. We like the wings. Um, yeah. It was awesome. It was good to see you again, Jen. Uh, Jen is awesome. She was, uh, we did some annoyance stuff together. So highly suggest checking out annoyance and stuff. I'm actually going to post a link between the next couple of uh, performers and just suggest that since tonight's a live show, um, that if you guys want to donate anything, donate it to that theater because so many of the people that I've met here tonight and awesome people that I love and respect and think are hysterical and have been on past shows came out of annoyance. Um, so we owe them some money. So feel free to donate whatever you'd spend at a show for like a beer or whatever you can afford. It's the holiday season, you guys. Okay, you ready for your next uh, performer? It's going to get crazy. Uh, I'm going to bring them up and introduce them in style. Oh, yeah. This dude is awesome, too. Also, after the scene, and uh, he just turned out of our uh, laugh at, laughs at Light, Lakeview um, like a week ago and was amazing. So, we're gonna go uh, absolutely mashed potato crazy for this next presenter, Andrew Cochran, everybody. Yeah, baby. Stand by, Andrew. Thank you, Seth. Nice shirt. Um, 
I am going to apologize in advance if my internet craps out a little bit. Um, my roommate's a Twitch streamer, so he's hogging up a lot of the internet. Uh, I noticed there are some parents on. Uh, you might not know what Twitch, Twitch streaming is. Um, it's a fancy way of saying unemployed. Unemployed. So, uh, again, sorry if the internet craps out a little bit. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning into the show. Um, Black comedy, it's back uh, in some forms. So, um, let's get into it. I work in sales because, uh, of course I do. Look at me. Uh, I look like someone that Denzel Washington would beat up in a movie. Uh, I'm corporate. I'm a drone. I'm, uh, I'm the balls of America's penis. Corporate sales, that's me. Uh, and that's the reason I'm in sales is simply because I didn't try in college. Um, did you guys know that? Yeah, that's what you were supposed to do in college is try. I, I didn't really get the memo. Uh, you do what they tell you to do and they hook you up with a pretty sweet job, apparently. Uh, that's the gig. And what are you supposed to do? You know, um, learn, study, build a network, find an internship. What did I do? Coke, Xanax build a gravity bong, find acid in a parking lot, you know? So now I, I sell insurance. Um, which is um, I really like when black people call me white boy. Um, I, I, I had this one coach for one, um, his name was Desmond, and I, I had earrings. I, I pierced my ears for the costume that I did in, in uh, for Halloween, I was Guy Pietti. And, um, I couldn't let the, I couldn't pull them out because then my ears, you know, you gotta let them heal or whatever it is uh, with pierced ears. And he sees me walk up with a beanie and earrings. He goes, damn, white boy. And I was like, this is good. I like this. I like, I like this. I think I'm going to this. I like, I like the way that feels when you say that. Um, so I copied his look. Uh, I ripped my jeans, pierced ears. It was, it was a whole thing. Uh, and then I, went back home to my white friends and they were like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, yeah, nothing stupid. I don't know. Just a silly thing I was trying out. I don't know. Um, <laughs> speaking of stealing from uh, things from black people, uh, any Elvis Presley fans in the crowd? Um, by a round of uh, muted applause, Elvis Presley. Uh, he's got this one song. Uh, he's got a lot of songs that really don't age well with the Me Too era, you know, ladies. Uh, he's got this song called It's Now or Never. Uh, which is basically, you know, reading into the song. It's, you know, we have to fight now. Um, that's the whole song. Which, you know, you listen to it, it's now or never. No, it's not, right? It's now or never or a little bit later. You know, if you want to you know, take her on a few dates, see how she's feeling. Oh, I don't get what the immediacy is. Oh, okay, what is the world about to end, Elvis? It's now or never. Okay, that makes sense. But if the world is ending, that's really what you want to do. That's the last thing you want to do on this earth is fuck. You don't want to, you don't have any loose ends you want to tie up. That's it. Like, I don't know what it is with men. It's always, oh, dude, you know, if the world's dying, I got to find the, the, the closest bitch. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Like, oh, dude, you're lying in bed. Dude, I'm, I'm dying. Like, look to your mom and dad. Mom, dad, I, I don't have a lot of time left on this earth. What's that? You're telling me that the rest of the families, that they're right in the other room and, and they're going to tell me everything that they've always, always loved about me and, and we're going to share a moment together? And with everyone else I've ever loved, all my friends, everyone I've, who I've ever crossed paths with, everyone I've ever wronged, everyone I've ever loved, they're all, they're all going to come and, and, and greet me and, 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 and share my final moments with me. And also, I've also always really wanted to meet Ruben Studdard, and he's he's in the other room as well, and he's gonna sing he's gonna sing a song with me. Two thousand and three American Idol, Ruben Studdard, <laughs> the next room over, and him and I are gonna sing a duet of the song that he sang at the end of Scooby Doo Two together as I drift off into oblivion. <laughs> no thanks. I gotta go find some titties instead. That's that's the logic that I get from that song. It's not it from now on ever. Um, cool, I got one minute left. Um, I got, I, I wrote a song. I didn't that transition, I wrote my own song. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, sharing a moment with someone for the first time. It should be loving for the first time. Parts, there's a man and a woman, right? Girl, you're my fire, my everything, my one desire. 
babe, I'm defeated. You make my heart feel hard, but I beat it. I thank God for the day you walked in that door. Like a lost category, I was searching for, oh my Lord. You're the best in the nation. Loving you feels like when I discovered masturbation. And then here's the girl's verse. Oh, <laughs> and you me. I feel like you're my one and only. Babe, my heart guides me. And I can feel your loving all inside me. I thank God for the day you walked in that door. Like a back massager, I found out the dollar store. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> in the nation. Loving you feels like an oven masturbation. Hated <laughs> my inflation. Believe in frontal constipation. Mystery, I'm not a racist. Loving you feels like when I discovered masturbation. And that's it. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Seth. Woo. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it going for Andrew, everybody. Love you, Andrew. Love you, Peyton. Good luck. Good luck later. <laughs> oh, man. You guys have fun out there? I am. I love that. We got some musical uh, ballad tree there. That was, that was awesome. I can't wait for your next single to come out, Andrew. Um, loving it. Loving it. Okay. Uh, check out in the... I, I couldn't... It was actually more difficult for me to figure out a link for this. I don't know why. But um, I think they more so are just taking donations through their shows. So definitely check out Annoyance's shows. I did figure out a link if you just want to donate and be a good person for the holidays um, because that's a nice thing to do. So if you want to do that, uh, you just click on that link and then you can donate whatever you want. I think it's through PayPal. Uh, okay, that's all I'm going to plug. We're just going to keep moving along. Uh, and I'm having a good time. I hope y'all are too. Let's go, uh, let's go nuts for this next comic. Uh, she actually just performed in that show too. It was awesome. Uh, and these people performed in uh, a fantastic run that we had back in February doing some wacky improv. Um, so thank you guys so much for, for killing it in all my shows and giving the people what they want. So let's go nuts for Perry Carter, everybody. Woo! Woo! Hello. Hello. Um, uh, my name is Perry Carter, and I was raised with religion, but not cottage cheese. <laughs> um, uh, sort of more on growing up. Uh, so I grew up in North Carolina, um, and that has nothing to do with what I'm about to say, so I'm not sure why I said it. But uh, growing up, my favorite candy ever was Three Musketeers. And... <laughs> When you loved uh, Three Musketeers as much as I did, you thought a lot about it. And I would get really puzzled because Three Musketeers, why is it called that if there are only two ingredients, right? The two ingredients are the chocolate of the outside and the nougat of the inside. Um, and I was annoyed by that at first until I realized that um, the third ingredient was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I grew up in North Carolina. I live in Chicago now. Um, and uh, so, you know, if you're from Chicago, you notice this, that at a lot of uh, sort of retail businesses, a lot of places like that, uh, kind of before the election results sort of took the week that they did to come out, uh, businesses would sort of boarded themselves up just in case there was any unrest after the election results uh, debuted. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, I, I and uh, about around last week they sort of started taking boards down. They started to take down all the boarding up that they had done, um, which brought me relief uh, because you know I really prefer it as marine lair and not plywood lair. <laughs> um, recently, recently, um, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, for many, it's been cuffing season. Um, not so much for me. Uh, recently, I was friend zoned by someone I really liked, and I tried to think about um, what's a more traumatizing zone to be in, the friend zone uh, or the Chaz in Seattle. And uh, it's the friend zone. 
<laughs> I can attest. I've never been to the Chaz, but it can't suck as much as this does. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of dark days, a really dark day um, from my own life that I'll share about with you guys is, um, is the day that I took too many whippets. <laughs> it was dark. It was really, it was a really uh, dark day because, you know, all of a sudden I had all of these dogs to worry about. <laughs> and they're big. Whippets are a big breed. Um, <laughs> speaking of dogs, um, I'd like to get into some, uh, some animal psychology with you all, if I may. Um, so I, I feel that dog brains are actually a lot more like our brains than we realize. Here's why I say that. Okay, so um, think, about, think about like in your mind's eye, a clip art dog, a clip art dog peeing. What's the clip art dog peeing on? A fire hydrant. So my thinking is that the same as when we see a waterfall or we hear a trickle, <laughs> pee, the dog makes the connection. When it sees a fire hydrant, it too has to pee. That's why it happens. And I will tell you that later tonight, I do plan to dip my dog's paw in a bowl of warm water while he's asleep. <laughs> I think the prank will work. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Um, just, I, I've got one moment, um, which is good because I, um, I have a really important uh, kind of sobering thing to share with you guys just to talk about. Um, and it can foster discussion after this. That would be fine with me. Um, so I was in an airport recently, um, don't tell Dr. Fauci, and I was, and, and a TV was on in the gate I was waiting at, and um, it was just sort of like, you know, it was just a TV playing a bunch of stuff, but um, <laughs> and subtitles, and this, a subtitle that had gotten stuck was one that said, this is what capitalism looks, looks like, and it stayed there over a clip from Conan, over an Otesla commercial, over a whole episode of Suits. And <laughs> I, I, I was sobered um, because that's exactly what capitalism looks like. <laughs> Thank you, I am done. <laughs> Thank you for Perry Card, everybody. Great night. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, and that is what capitalism capitalism looks like. I love it. That's great. Uh, that was awesome, Perry Carr. You're 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 a peach. Uh, I love your sets. Those you guys are all doing new material. I love it. It's you're keeping it funky and fresh. Um, you guys, uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Thank you all. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why I said peach. Oh, oh, you said pear? Like a pear. Nice. There's jokes in the chat, you guys. You're getting a full experience. It's coming at you from every, every side. Um, oh my gosh. We have uh, so many great comics that are, are also coming tonight. So I'm just going to stop yabbing my jaw. And let's go nuts for Eric Martin, everybody. Woo! 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 <laughs> Eric, where are you at? There you are. Right here. <laughs> here I am. And this is actually my hair. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm Eric Martin. And um, I have been thinking a lot lately about how like people are liking a lot of stuff from when they were kids. You know, like whether that's like toys or comic books or blatant sexism. Like I still think my girlfriend has cooties. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of like stuff from when I was a kid or playing video games uh, that I played a long time ago. Like one, one I've been watching a lot lately has been Animaniacs. And I haven't gotten to the new ones just yet. Although, but I am still surprised that Hello Nurse survived the Me Too movement. <laughs> Where's that disclaimer on Hulu? <laughs> and, but like, I think parents, a lot of adults like, like kids cartoons or kids movies. And I think, like a lot of it is because with parents, like it's the first things they can share with their kids and be like, oh, honey, look at this. 
like some mom like excitedly showing her daughter hocus pocus and then finally her daughter turns to her and says mommy what's a virgin <laughs> like there's some unintended consequences in sharing your childhood you don't know what your kids will pick up on like the, like like in, in kids movies in the past like characters would actually die and i know a lot of you just immediately went to mufasa sitting there lying on the ground with simba poking him saying come on get up <laughs> But there's crazier stuff. Like if you watch the never the never ending story, like at, there's a point where the entire world is destroyed and it's just the princess and the kids sitting there in the dark. You won't see that on Wonder Pets. <laughs> but like with, with in, in and it's not just me liking this stuff. My 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 girlfriend likes things like this too. She likes she still like stuffed animals and still buys them, or she likes candy and treats, which I, I can't blame her. I love dessert too, and, and her. And in, honestly, she's really cute when she sees a stuffed animal in the toy that she has, uh, a stuffed animal in the store that she hasn't bought yet. But, uh, but what will happen sometimes because of this is I'll get something that I like, uh, whether that's you know Dr. Pepper cream soda or something I wanna try like Australian licorice. And I'll say like, hey, honey, would you, would you like to try some of this? And she'll go, oh yeah, oh yeah, sure. And she'll take it and then she'll hand it back to me and there's like half of it left. I'm sitting there like, what the heck? You know, I said you could have a sip of it, not the whole thing. You're like, just, just a taste. And she's like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> and we're like, there was a time we went to Portillo's, for those of you who don't, no, which I think most of you are from Chicago. Portillo's is like a local hot dog, Italian beef, hamburger chain. They have this thing called the chocolate cake shake, which is exactly as it sounds. And she had never had a chocolate cake shake before. And so we're like, I said, okay, well, let's, let's get that with our meal too. And she, you know, she wasn't sure like how much she'd be able to have. So I said, well, let's just get like two small ones, one for each of us. She says, well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'll like it. So let's just get a large one. And then if I like it, like we'll split that. But if I don't like it, that way you still have a whole one. <sighs> Unfortunately, I made the mistake of driving off while still, while only having had like a sip of it. And by the time, like a half hour later, I go to grab it and have another sip. There's only a quarter of the chocolate cake shake left, which at that point is really just the chocolate cake sitting at the bottom. I had to go shake. I needed the shake, not the cake. I look at her, what, uh, what the heck? What's going on, honey? And she's like, well, you, I'm, I thought you were having some, you know? And I was like, I was focused on driving. She's like, I'm sorry, but it was so good. You know, it's kind of like she gets demonically possessed, you know, which I can only imagine what will happen when, when with kids, like, mommy, can I play with this unicorn? I know. <gasps> Is mine. But, but you have 17 unicorns and every time we go to the store and I and you you buy it for yourself even if I saw it first I don't care all the unicorns are mine and the dragons and the stingrays what does that leave me this cabbage patch doll Aww. <laughs> mommy can I have some gummy bears no, gummy bears are mine. You can only have the sugar-free ones. But, but the sugar-free ones give me diarrhea. I don't care. <laughs> Go clean up your mess before I give you my gummies. Mommy, can we watch? Can I watch the next Puppy Dog Pals episode without you? No. We have to wait for your father to be here so he can do the barks and the theme song and Bob's voice. Mommy, <laughs> mommy, can I have the rest of the mint fudge ice cream? No, the mint fudge is mine. Have the other one. But the other one is butter pecan, which dad only bought because he said it reminded him of going to his grandparents' house when he was younger. I don't care. The mint fudge ice cream is mine. Can I, can I at least add uh, chocolate? Yeah, that's fine. A and strawberries? Yeah, okay. 
And sprinkles? No, the sprinkles are mine. Even the rainbow ones? Especially the rainbow ones. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's what I have. I'm Eric Martin. We go it for Eric, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was great, dude. Got some voices in there. I, did anyone else feel like uh, the the bit with the shake felt a little? That's a, that felt like a Seinfeld bit. You should do that in the Seinfeld voice. Yeah. No shake. No shake. I can't do it in Seinfeld. I, I needed the shake, not the cake. No shake. No shake. I got no shake. Holy cake. Okay. That was, <laughs> it like mirrored it from you guys. Okay. Uh, we're moving along. Oh, man. Uh, Eric, you, you went in on that one. I loved it, man. It was so great. So great to see you guys and to get goofy and wacky with you. Oh, man. We have a veteran uh, shtick player coming to the plate. Uh, you guys love her. I love her. Uh, she's hysterical. And uh, she goes by one word. Dirt. Okay. Is everyone hanging in there? Yeah. Yeah. I assume barely if this is where you've come for entertainment. <laughs> um, some of my family is on here, so it seems they're out of excuses. <laughs> uh, I recently watched a documentary about the dying American shopping mall, and bear with me here. Is it the malls that are dying, or is it the mall walkers? <laughs> <laughs> dying. <laughs> it's sad to see the art of crowd work dying now that no one's from out of town. Um, that's a joke by comedians for comedians, so. Um, let's see. I've been, I've been feeling uh, pretty back and forth lately about posting on my Instagram uh, about COVID, like facts or stories, because it seems like no one seems to give a shit. Uh, but um, I thought of a way to make people maybe think twice about giving a shit, and that's to replace like the word people with puppies. So <clears throat> I've pulled a few uh, excerpts from some news, news articles to show you how it would work. So dun, dun, dun. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> from the failing New York Times. A quarter of a million puppies have died from the coronavirus. Passing the number Dr. Fauci predicted in March with no sure end in sight. From the barely associated press. In Pennsylvania, <laughs> if you're having puppies over to socialize, you're supposed to wear a mask. And so are your puppies. That's the rule. But Barb Chestnut has no intentions of following it. <laughs> Come on, Barb. From Wired. Denial, then fear. COVID-19 puppies in their own words. <laughs> From the British Broadcasting Corporation, aka BBC News. <clears throat> In Florida, a taxi driver who believed false claims that coronavirus was a hoax has lost his puppy to COVID-19. Um, I don't know why Britain is reporting on Florida, but if you guys have any interest, that's one state we'll sell back to you um, for <laughs> mere laundry quarters. Uh, if Britain is on this call, please let them know. Um, and lastly, from bishopaccountability.org. <laughs> Bishopaccountability.org has identified around 78 Catholic bishops worldwide accused publicly of sexual crimes against puppies, and more than 35 bishops worldwide who have been accused publicly of sexual wrongdoing against adult puppies. <laughs> that was off topic, but you understand. Now we care, don't we? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, enough about COVID. Um, let's talk a little bit about the coin shortage. This is a topic important to me. 
I love quarters. Um, ever, uh, ever the entrepreneur, which is my job title on Hinge. Uh, <laughs> here's what I've been up to. I've been saving all of my quarters and then standing in the laundry room of my apartment complex and selling them um, four quarters for three dollars. <laughs> and it's been working because quarters are so rare. Um, I've been monetarily motivated, which is my job title on Tinder since I was little. Um, <laughs> there's commas there. I haven't, I've not been on Tinder since I was little, but I have been monetarily motivated, which is my job title on Tinder. Okay. Um, I had 12 gerbils once, once when I was little, uh, because I couldn't tell the difference between a boy and a girl. And it would have been 14, but did you guys know that the father gerbil will eat the babies if you don't separate them after birth? <laughs> well, they do. Um, and uh, so what I learned was that they have very liberal abortion laws um, in the society, uh, but the men still are making the rules. Um, <laughs> Uh, but seriously, I don't know if you've ever heard gerbils having sex, but it's really loud. Um, and I, I heard it a few nights um, when I was trying to rest up for fifth grade. And so in the middle of the night, if they were super loud, I'd have to pick up, pick up their cage and carry them into the bathroom. Um, and I would call this the Mile High Club for gerbils. <laughs> <laughs> And what does that have to do with money? Well, other than that I tried to sell them at a family garage sale, nothing. <laughs> um, here's the part of the show where I just tell you random thoughts that I've had and other <laughs> material that I'm going to offer you to use at your uh, holiday dinner conversations. <clears throat> um, should it be illegal for large breed dogs and small breed dogs to breed? Yeah. I, <laughs> you don't, no one has to answer, but take these home to your family. Uh, <laughs> I heard a woman on HGTV's House Hunter say she's hoping to use her terrace to grow salad. And suddenly I feel like, are we not dreaming as big as we could be? <laughs> <laughs> Is it considered nepotism if Home Depot uses its own products to build another Home Depot? Or is that like organ donation, but for buildings? <laughs> um, if you work at a tattoo shop, does that mean you need to have 356 tattoos? Because I worked at a daycare and I have zero kids. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, is semen gender fluid? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that was great. It's so it's always good to see you, Dirks. And uh, I love I love yeah, please use all those questions at home. That was great. Oh man. We're having a good time. Um, let's see. Uh, just get this queued up here because I'm doing all of it. This is I'm the whole one man show over here, guys. Uh, trying to make it work, but um, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this is awesome. So many people are here. So many great people uh, I see from uh, back in DC and whatnot. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and th that being said, if you are uh, a comic or if you want to try your hand at stand up for the first time ever, we had a bunch of people uh, over this past year try it for the first time. Low stakes. You won't get stuff thrown at you. Um, and I'll mute anybody who says boo. So if you want to do that, let me know. Hit me up. Um, just hit me up through Schick, uh, Chicago on Facebook. Uh, follow it for shows. And uh, we'll be doing this every month. We might be doing this more often if we're going to be stuck inside more. So uh, we got a lot of comics. We need to put some funny stuff out there. Make us feel better. Uh, yeah. Which uh, this next guy, I haven't seen him do comedy in a hot minute. So I'm very excited. Uh, please give it up for Martin Steger, everybody. Yeah. 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 Loving is easy. You had me fucked up. It used to be so hard. Uh, I'm trying to hit you, Martin. Hold on a sec. All good. There we go. Hello. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, as Seth just said, uh, I'm Martin. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Seth, for having me. Uh, I'm going to have a magic trick for you super deep in this set and also some audience participation throughout. So if you want to take part in that, get ready to type stuff in the chat. Uh, but first, uh, about me. Uh, I've had problems with my weight all of my life. It started going up when I was a kid. It plateaued in high school. It went up again when I was in college. It's plateaued, been up and down ever since. Uh, the one tool that I found that has helped me manage it is counting calories. And when I stopped doing that, I have found that the scales numbers slowly go up, but my mind begins to just tell the rest of me that uh, the scale's broken. You're not gaining weight. And I, deep down, I know that the scale is in fact working. Uh, I'll go and test it in different rooms and find that it is working, but I'll keep telling myself that it's broken. So at some point I have to admit that I'm actually telling myself that gravity is wrong, <laughs> which I would never do with any other metaphysical thing in my life. Like I would never take time. I would never show up to a meeting 20 minutes late and tell my boss, uh, I'm not late. Time's just a flawed concept, man. So uh, counting calories to do it. Use nutrition labels. They have serving size calories per serving and number of servings, most importantly, for this bit. And to demonstrate that, I have a bottle of sriracha hot sauce here to demonstrate. And Woo. my question for you in the chat is how many servings of hot sauce do people think this bottle contains? And while you type those in, I'll tell you fun facts. Uh, it has a chicken. We've got a 16, thank you for guessing. Uh, it says this is its natural color. So whatever that is, is natural, they claim. And it says to shake well, which sucks to do when it's this empty. All right, we have some answers coming in. Thank you guys so much. That is great participation. Our closest was uh, Michael with 164 was their guess, which is very close. This is 158 servings when full. It has been depleted, so it's much less now. But 158 servings, one teaspoon per serving, and zero calories per serving. If 158 seems like a weird number for you, uh, it seemed weird to me, so I did some research on that and the zero calorie thing. The FDA, if you are a maker of food, will let you divide your container into servings. It's the same size, same amount of stuff, but they'll let you divide it into smaller and smaller servings until you get under five calories per serving, and then you can list it at zero calories. Hence, 158, which is a really dumb number, but that gets you to under five and therefore under zero for their purposes. It's weird. And so it's, I would never dream of doing something like that in real life. You're just changing numbers around to make it sound better. Like I would never tell my girlfriend, uh, I love you 3000 servings of love. I would go with, I love you very much or something less weird. <laughs> I have a competitor brand here for you to examine as well. This is Sriracha Cha, which has been published by XSP. This bottle has 92 servings, one teaspoon per serving, five calories per serving. So text Pete, he stole this recipe. All the ingredients are the exact same, but he added five calories per serving and uh, a cha to the title. So does that make him a hero or a villain? Let me know in the chat as I move on in the show. Next up, we have a pickle. This is a Mount Olives kosher dill spear. What serving size is a pickle? You might think that one pickle is one serving or one pickle spear is one serving. That used to be the case. We've got some votes for hero and villain. I like it, I like it. Uh, this pickle I thought was one serving too. And then it turns out I've been lied to all of my life. I read the label the other day and the serving size of these is actually two thirds of a pickle spear. So this is more than a serving. <laughs> Guess what? that gets them down to zero calories per pickle instead of the old five calories per pickle. So magic trick, I promised you, I'm gonna cut off a third of this pickle, no more calories. <laughs> Both turn that into a zero calorie pickle and undermine the entire system I use for washing my weight in one fell swoop. All the magic trick, thank you for being here for it, folks. Now, my last item. Another opportunity for audience participation is, I can't believe it's not butter spray. How many servings does everybody think is in this bottle? You can see it's about the size of my hand, so not that big. Hit me in the chat with your guesses. 500, we've got a 50. Uh, fun facts about this one. 
Uh, it's perfect for topping and cooking. I don't know what topping is in cooking, but it, it, it's, it's, it's good for it, people. <laughs> right. We've got two guesses for, we have a 500. 500 is actually our closest. Uh, but this is the most egregious abuse of serving sizes I've found yet, because the serving is one spray. And there are 1,130 sprays in this container, which again gets you down to zero calories per serving. It's really messed with folks. There's been a conspiracy that I was not aware of until now. Um, that is what I have to share with you. I'm running down on time. I'm close to zero servings on time. So I'm going to support myself 96, hours, 96 calories of Miller Lite and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Woo! this guy there we go oh man that's awesome i've been trying to get martin on stick for a while so keep it keep it going for martin that was awesome um and now i know the trick to get uh calories, man. oh man my, my heart hurt when you cut that pickle Hold on. <laughs> um okay i love pickles well you got shit too um okay we've got two more comics coming to the stage hope you're ready for them because they're gonna knock it out of the park uh very excited uh, a, a repeat customer. We've had her live back in D.C. She now lives in Nashville, uh, crushing comedy out there, I hope, or hopefully in the future. Um, and uh, and she's been killing it every show here. So let's go nuts for Chelsea Mubarak. Did I? Woo! 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 Oh, Chelsea, I'm trying to find you. Here. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Am I on? Am I good? Can you see sure, me? Right. Go for Woo! it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <sighs> hey guys, uh, I love these shows and thank you, Seth, for having me back on. Um, I deleted all my dating apps recently and it feels really good. I realized that scrolling through dating apps is kind of like opening and closing the fridge. You're not opening Bumble to see if the options have changed. You're opening Bumble to see if your standards have lowered. Uh. <laughs> and, and you guys are like, oh no, <laughs> Chelsea, why did you delete all your dating apps? How could you take yourself off the market? Why? <laughs> because shopping for a man is like shopping at H&M. You're browsing <laughs> around, everything looks really nice. It's super cheap, looks really good, but then you take it home and it just falls apart. It just unravels right away. Um, <laughs> I, went on, I went on a date with a guy recently. He looked really pretty. Uh, <laughs> but he talked about himself the entire time. And he was not a Republican, so it surprised me. And like, all I wanted to hear were those three little words. How about you? <laughs> and let me tell you, yeah, there's a special place in hell for men who only talk about themselves on dates. Right next to Pats fans, backseat drivers, uh -huh. people who eat in their car. It's for you, Wojo. <laughs> uh, I had it being there. I had it, really. I've had it uh, just being there emotionally for men. Um, so I got <laughs> And I got a male dog, and uh, I was like, at the very least, he will protect me. Um, this dude just lays around on my couch, rent-free, no job, always trying to hump my leg. Turns out the dog is blind, and I actually have to go places with him. He had to go to Albuquerque, and I didn't really want to go, but he needed me. Um, so I'm like his legit service human, pretty much. Um, anyway, loneliness, loneliness during COVID is really hard. Are you guys lonely? Like, it's a <laughs> um, and my friend, she's so sweet, and she was like, just, like, call me next time. I don't want you to cry alone. And I was like, oh, I don't cry alone. <laughs> yeah, I cry with the windows open. I want the whole neighborhood to hear me. <laughs> I cry so loud, I scare my own dog. I cry so 
so loud, I scare other people's dogs. So don't worry. I don't really understand why everyone's being so politically correct about COVID. Like, you can't just ask someone if they have it, apparently. You have to ask, oh, do you know anyone with COVID? But like, you wouldn't ask someone, do you know anyone who has an STD? Uh -huh. You would just be like, do you have an STD? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> COVID is escalating all of my work tension. Um, I'm all like, per my last email, which is the diplomatic way of saying, do you fucking read? <laughs> this, woman, this woman at work has been driving me crazy and her name is Bacon, okay? And I'm like, all right, Pamela, Sausage Links, whatever your name is, I need you to be a little less grits and a little more Morning Star Veggie Patty. That's what I need from you today, okay? Um, I've been taking a lot of walks and my favorite thing to do is to go for a walk and sing musicals. And so like now that there isn't anybody around, I don't know. Outside, like, there's no business. I don't know if he's up yet. Oh, no. I was uh, walking around my neighborhood the other night and I just kind of like looked around, didn't see anyone. Just tap dancing it out, people. Um, I never really cared about my internet quality before this whole pandemic has me wanting the highest speed and the best internet possible. Like I want the fastest internet that exists. I want an internet tower in my house. I want stage light. I want a standing microphone that needs to be tested before every Zoom call. Like, can you hear me? Are we ready to go live? Like there are guys off to the side, the whole soundboard, their own bathroom. There's a woman checking my makeup like, this lighting make my skin look okay? Should I wear the blue blazer, the red blazer, the flannel shirt? I'm not wearing pants. Uh, the soundboard is actually operated by a seven-year-old who isn't in school. And uh, he's like, is it nap time yet? I'm like, no, only if you get this right. Can I sing your ABCs? No, you're operating the soundboard and I'm the one talking. And he's like, you're really mean. And I'm like, this ain't school, kid. If you can't do your job, I got plenty of other kids lined up. <laughs> There's a line of children out the front door of my house looking for work. <laughs> so I pull in another one. <laughs> can I take my lunch ball? No. Bring it the next one. Um, have you guys seen that movie, Halloween? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. I'm... <laughs> I feel like Trumpies would really like this movie because it has a lot of people who don't really know what they're doing giving directions. The guy's out there, he's like, I'm a doctor, lock your doors. I sell insurance, get in your house. And like, Mike Mars is not that scary. He literally looks like a middle-aged man in traffic <laughs> who's just pissed off. <laughs> okay, I'm getting really... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna end it there. Thanks. <laughs> Kelsey, everybody. Okay. Oh my gosh. Always great to see you and hear new jokes from you. Um, you're right. You're you're spot on with the Mike Myers. That's awesome. Um, okay. We have the penultimate penultimate comic. Is that how you say that? We have your, yeah, we have your, we have your headliner comic saying he's awesome. Mm. Yeah, crushed it. Um, before at, at my show, I had, I referred to him earlier in the show if you're paying attention, um, and, uh, and he was so funny. And I had him open, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw him at the end because he can crush any role, and uh, he's he's hysterical. So that being said, uh, let's give it up for your next comic, Peyton Rudy, everybody. Woo! Woo! Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay. How we do it? Okay. 
quite the intro. I told him to say all of that. None of it's true. Um, <laughs> this is where you work out jokes, guys. I'm, I'm hearing no feedback, so this is a great show. I'm thinking uh, some new material, not. Uh, don't be fooled by the glasses. They're blue light IMAX things. They do absolutely nothing. So just put those on the head. It was an Amazon impulse buy. How you guys been doing in, in, in lockdown? Good. Yeah, me too. Me too. I've been silent. Um, I, uh, I watched the movie Point Break recently, which I hadn't seen for a long time. Uh, I saw it when I was really little, so I got like this really nostalgic feeling about the movie. Um, but watching it so much later and, and older, I just think the movie should have never been made because the premise is terrible. It's like a really, really bad 80s porno. It's <laughs> god awful. Look at the characters in the movie. Keanu Reeves plays a guy named Johnny Utah, and he's an FBI agent. And Patrick Swayze plays a guy named Bodie and they're both surfing and they're here to fix the cable. It's like a terrible premise. <laughs> wow, Peyton, great opening joke. Yeah, thanks guys. You know, I've been doing this for a few years. Um, I love Point Break. I love the movie just because I saw it when I was little and I forgot how big like heartthrobs Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze were in the 90s. Like, they were both good looking guys. Look, I'm not gay, but even I want fries with that shake. You know what I mean? I'm just saying they're good looking guys. Mm. Oh, yeah. Clap and laugh. I can tell it ripped with you guys. It's cool. Um, I I was in my car recently and I have Sirius XM because I have money. And um, <laughs> one of the stations came on. It was like, you know, 50s on five or whatever, the old school stuff. And there was a song that was playing, and it went, choo, 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 chew your bubble gum. And I sat to my, I was to myself, <laughs> the, the old people are laughing at the song because they all know it, and it's probably their ringtones. Um, I listened to the song. I was, who was listening to this? Back in the 50s, people were going to dance clubs, dancing to this, about chewing your bubble gum. Listen to the lyrics, guys. And, but I, I have nowhere to speak, though, because my generation of kids are listening to a song about something that's wet and macaroni-like. So <laughs> they have no room. <laughs> oh, my God. And I've been trying to stay off social media as much as I can, but I haven't been doing that at all. It's just not good for, you know, your mental health. It's, just, it's terrible. And uh, all these girls I went to high school with, I see them post on their Instagram or Twitter pages all the time saying, so I did a thing. And uh, I think that's one of the worst comments you can put on a post ever. Um, has anyone said that? If, if So I did a thing on their page. Oh, now everyone's quiet about, okay, sure. <laughs> I, I don't get why people say that only because they say it to things that's not really a thing. Like they cut their hair and they got like a comma tattoo on their wrist, which is fine. Do you, you know, whatever, if you're happy, but that's not a thing. If you're going to post something on your page, so I did a thing, I want to see, so I did a thing, dot, 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 and your boyfriend's dead on the bathroom floor. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that is a thing. That's doing something. I don't know. <laughs> I've been, uh, I was watching Nick, uh, you know, Nickelodeon and uh, I like my cartoons during in the morning and stuff. Uh, and then at night, I like watching Nick at night because, you know, it's got the edgier sitcoms and it's a lot more fun. Um, there was a show on there called Mom. Has anyone seen the show Mom? No. 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 Thanks for saying no, at least. Uh, no, I haven't. No, talk about it. I, uh, I was watching the show Mom. One of the episodes I saw, there was a guy in a wheelchair with his wife or whatever in the living room and someone knocks on the door, they open the door and I guess it's the guy best friend. And the guy says to the guy in the wheelchair, hey, Professor Nutsack, how you doing? And the guy in the wheelchair is not even phased by it. He's just like, hey, Stanky Dickweed, what's going on? <laughs> Professor Nutsack and Stanky Dickweed, guys, this is Nick at night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Full House is up next, I, you know, like, 
<laughs> the dirtiest thing said on Full House was have mercy. That just meant Uncle Jesse was about to get some ass. That's all that meant. It's the dirtiest thing. It's not like the Olsen twins are back there doing some lesbian shit. Like, you know, you got it, dude, you know. Right, cut it out. That was not funny. All right. Uh, sorry. That's an Uncle Joey reference. Everyone's been quiet, so I'm going to assume that ripped too, staying in the act. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad we get to at least do some shows like this, you know, uh, from my from my uh, hang on. Someone said I would totally watch some Olsen twins lesbian shit. Uh, add me on Facebook. Uh, sorry, I had to read that comment. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I'm glad we're doing stuff, though. I'm glad we're at least doing Zoom shows and all this. And I love I love that I get to do this. This is uh, my favorite thing in the world. Um, and I'm hardworking but I get lazy about certain things. Like uh, like everyone would, you know, running errands, doing laundry. Well, my thing is toilet paper. I'm super lazy when it comes to that. Like if I'm in the downstairs bathroom and there's no toilet paper, I'm not going to the upstairs closet for it. You know what I mean? Like dead mission. <laughs> if it's down there, that's great. But I'll go in there and I'll do my thing and then I'll look over and I'll be like, there's none there. I'd be like, well, that's a shame. And then look at my hand, you know. Looks like it's uh, mom's nice hand towels in the old faucet splash that day. You know what I mean? Ha oh. <laughs> ha, this guy should be on SNL. What? Thanks. That's so nice of you to say. I'm ripping through this, guys. I, uh, I'm turning 20 this December. How, how do I look so young? I don't know. Um, thanks. My grandma's in here, by the way. You could tell when she came in going, is he on? Is that him? <laughs> I uh, <laughs> texted my dad, mute the phone. Um, but I, I'm turning 20 and uh, I'm at that really boring age still where I can't do anything, you know. And I was really excited when I was turning 18 because, you know, that's when you become a man. It's when you become a woman. You're independent. You're doing your thing. But they started taking everything away. Now you can't do anything when you turn 18. Like when you turned 18 20 years ago, you could smoke, you could go vote, you could buy lottery tickets, blah, blah, blah. Now, that's all you can do, basically, is buy a lottery ticket and vote. I don't want to do that. What am I, 50? Why would I be doing any of that? Ha, ha, ha. Thanks again. I, uh... <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it till it's not funny. Um, but I don't understand why they took away the smoking for 18-year-olds. Like, why? It's not something people just take up at 18. No one starts smoking at 18. You either start smoking at 12 years old or not at all. You know, no one just, <laughs> no one takes it up as jogging. You know, it's just, you, you either have a really terrible childhood or you don't. That's how it works. No <laughs> one's standing in a gas station looking at a pack of camels going, three more months, you and me, then we get started. Here we go. <laughs> uh, let us smoke. Jeez. I had a friend who was turning 18, actually, and he, um, he's a little bit older than me, a couple months older than me, and he goes, you know what, for my 18th birthday, guys, you know what we're going to do? I'm like, what, strip club, something? He was like, let's go bet on some horses. And I just looked at him like I am right now, like, uh, you want to go bet on some horses? What is your problem? What are you, 90? <laughs> and uh, no, what am I going to go buy some scratch-offs to? Like, I'm 50, named Larry. Nah, let's go put some money on Seabiscuit. There we go. This is cool. You guys get to see uh, me have a mental just breakdown and cancel myself on Zoom here in a second. Um, <laughs> I've been uh, I've been trying to exercise a little bit more, and I've been uh, taking walks around my neighborhood and stuff. And I noticed, um, you know, the neighborhood watch sign. I think they should change the logo for that. You know what I mean? Like, who's still running around committing crimes in fedoras and trench coats? <laughs> I don't. I don't get this. Who's running around going, "Give me all the money, or the girl gets it"? Yeah. Like, that's not <laughs> how that's going. oh my god! Hey, <laughs> dude, I, I just change the logo to something else. I don't think it should be that. I feel like the logo should be like some 16, 17 year old kid with a Honda Civic with blue lights underneath. Like that is serious danger. You know what I mean? Police need to be called. He's playing Lil Uzi. Watch out. <laughs> Oh my God, what an awesome closing joke. Really? Thanks. Well, I'll end there. Um, I'm Peyton Ruddy, guys. Thanks for having me tonight. Happy holidays.
Thank you all for Peyton, everybody. Oh, my God. Thank you. Woo! Oh, yeah. Look at those glasses. Yeah, they do nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, guys, keep it going for Peyton. That was awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. Thanks, guys. What a gr perfect closer to the night, man. I know. It's weird. It's weird. I, don't, I don't know if you've done Zoom shows before, but it's I have. Fun. Yeah, you can, you can have a little breakdown while you're doing it. It's a, sometimes that's fun. That's uh, Yeah. Yeah. Comedy roots when you do that. Um, oh my gosh, you guys keep it going for yourself, honestly. Tonight, this was awesome. Um, we had a lot of fun. I'm, I'm trying to keep the, the comedy spirit alive, given everything, and it's uh, staying alive because of you guys. And uh, again, tonight we had Jennifer, Andrew, Perry, Eric, Sarah, Martin, Chelsea, Peyton, and myself, Seth Payne. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'll leave you on one little. One little weird joke uh, with my my dad's in the back, and I don't I don't know how this is gonna go. Um, but um, <laughs> it'll be good for Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, we're getting the lights. Um, <laughs> last joke. So, uh, so with with everything, there hasn't been any festivals or concerts. And uh, I had a buddy of mine who uh, we went down to New Orleans years ago, and we met up with his his cousin. Actually, they hadn't seen in years. He's a whole bohemian, totally off the grid, right? And uh, he does Burning Man every year. And my buddy, like, works for Yahoo, and it's, like, super ultra conservative. And, like, he's, like, I can never do Burning Man. It was, like, very awkward uh, kind of dinner. But they're jamming about music. They both like a lot of the same music. And then he's, like, he's, like, you, how do you make money again? And his bohemian cousin, Tristan, is, like, I, uh, I sell poets uh, on, this, on the street. It's little poems. I'm a poet. And, uh, and he's, like, how much money do you make per poem? And he's, like, whatever they want to give me, man. It's, like, okay, so not a lot. It's like, those tickets are expensive to Burning Man. If you know, if you've been, or if you don't know, you kind of know what it is. And, uh, and we're like, how do you afford to go to Burning Man? And uh, he's like, well, I, I help put up the orgy deck. And we were like, what? Like, ooh. And he's like, yeah, well, hey, at least I don't have to tear it down. Okay, and. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so at least that guy doesn't have to do that this year with COVID. The, the silver lining, if you will. Gross. Okay, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. <laughs> Tune in next month, and uh, me and my family are going to jam down here for a bit. Have a good night. Um, so I hope you can get out your family through Zoom or in person. Uh, be safe, wear a mask, and uh, keep supporting Zoom comedy. We'll be back next month, and uh, have a good night. Go play some music, and say goodbye, and yeah, love you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, so. Good job. Good work, everybody. Woo! Good work, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.